Okay, let's solve this dynamics question where we have a box or a block on an inclined plane. So we're told here we have a 10 kilogram mass is initially moving up on a smooth incline at 5 meter per second. So we're given the velocity. This is our initial velocity V naught. So let's write that as a given. V naught is 5 meter per second. And we're told it's a smooth incline, meaning we're going to neglect friction. So we're neglecting friction. We have no friction resistance between the block and the incline plane. And also, we're asked what distance up the incline will it travel before it stops. So we know this block, or 10 kilogram mass, is moving up at some acceleration and it's gonna stop somewhere here and we want to determine this distance some distance so let's assume it stops at this point it stops at this distance and we're gonna call it s what distance does it stop at before it comes back down so it's gonna stop somewhere before it starts going back down so we want to find this S. So we can begin by drawing the free body diagram. And here's our answer choices. Sorry, I didn't mention these. So this is a FE type question. So initially, we're going to do the free body diagram. and But before that, let's just focus on reorienting the axes. So this is going to be my X. This is going to be my positive Y. This is my positive X. And this is always recommended to do for inclined plane questions so anything along this direction is positive x anything this way is negative x anything up is positive anything down here is negative along the y so we realize here everything is acting strictly along the x-axis right so we know we have no friction and we're gonna have some mass times acceleration along the x because it's moving up and if I draw the free body diagram, let me just draw the box on here. We're going to have a normal force. Let's call it N. So that's between the block and the incline plane. And we're going to have the weight of the block. So let's call it W. And we know weight equals mass times gravity, right? and we can denote that we have if this angles 30 this angle must be 30 degrees so that angles 30 and the component that I'm mostly concerned with here is the component along the X so it goes down it goes this way so it's negative right and this component is gonna be what mg sine 30 right mg sine 30 degrees and it's going to be negative because it goes down right so we're going to write that negative sign when we do our f equals ma so on that note we're going to begin with f equals ma what we're going to do here is take the sum of the forces along the x must equal mass times acceleration this is newton's second law from this we can find the acceleration so when we have the acceleration we can use kin our kinematics equations to find this S. That's typically what you have to do for these type of questions. And we're combining kinetics and kinematics. So let's use our sum of the forces along the X. Because we've stated everything acts along the X direction. The block is not moving up, right? Nothing's acting along the Y. Must equal to the mass times acceleration. And this is Newton's second law. So what forces am I looking at? So based on the free body diagram, we're just going to look at everything along the x direction. The x direction is this, right? So it's just going to be this mg sine of 30. And it's going to be negative because it goes down, right? It goes this way, so it's negative. So we're going to have negative mg sine 30 degrees equals the mass. The acceleration in this case is unknown. And we can, we know M is what, 10 kilograms, that's given. 
10 kilograms sine 30 degrees equals the 10 kilograms times our acceleration our only unknown is the acceleration we can solve for that and I got about negative four sorry I forgot the G here yes so this is my bad so the G the G is 9.81 right it's gonna be our M G and we're gonna assume that if G is going down we're assuming it's gonna be we're gonna denote it as positive 9.81 so we're gonna say that in this case so it's gonna be negative the mass is 10 kilograms gravity is 9.81 meter per second squared times sine of 30 so we're still gonna get a negative answer and we get a equals you're just dividing by both sides by 10 in this case to be negative 4.905 meter per second squared so it's just telling us that the block is decelerating that's all this is so we have our acceleration our deceleration and now after having that we can use our kinematics equations to find the total time it takes for the block to reach this point so we can find the time then from the time we can use the other kinematic equation to find the total distance so using FE handbook 9.5 for the total time we're going to use this equation and for the total distance we're going to use this equation so we can just use these two equations and in the FE handbook 10.0 I believe so it's going to be this equation and this equation and in the 10.0 it's going to be on page 115 in the 9.5 it's going to be on page 77 in the dynamics section so we can do that let's do the solve for the time first so our velocity final equals our v naught plus at and we know that our velocity final is going to be zero because when the block comes to a stop before it stops the velocity is zero so our velocity final zero our initial velocity is given to be what five meter per second plus our acceleration is going to be negative the 4.905 meter per second squared times our time and we can solve for the time and it's going to be 1.019 seconds so this is the time it takes for the block to travel up and before until it stops so we have that time from the time now we can once again go back and use this equation so s equals s naught plus v naught t plus one half a naught t squared so we're going to use that to find the total distance until it stops so s equals our s naught and let me go back s naught plus v naught t plus one half a naught t squared so we want this this is our final position we're solving for that s naught is going to be zero so then we have v naught times t v naught we stated is given to be five meter per second the time we've determined that is going to be 1.019 seconds plus one half a naught in this case don't use 9.81 we're going to use the acceleration along the x-axis so it's going to be the negative 4.905 meter per second squared and the time squared we take 1.019 seconds squared so we can solve for s and we get the value to be around 2.55 meters and that's going to be our answer so it's going to be b that's all